everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Bricks PLC Advanced HMI Communication and we'll do this through Modbus TCP. Now Advanced HMI is a powerful adaptable HMI SCADA which is Supervisor Control and Data Acquisition de Development Package that takes advantage of Visual Studio and you have no coding required and you simply drag and drop items onto your page and the best thing is software is free itself. So the, what I have up on my screen here is we have our uh, current uh, PLC, it's the bricks, and you'll notice that my communication, I'm actually communicating via my USB port located right here, and we will communicating to the advanced HMI through our Ethernet port right here, and that's Modbus TCP is the protocol that we'll be using. Now the first thing we'll do is um, we will download our Visual Studio and if you notice there's a link here for Visual Studio and we want the Visual Studio com uh, Community uh, 2017 and it's a free full featured um, uh, IDE uh, for students open source and individual developers so you download this install it and then what you do is you go to advanced HMI and sound or SourceForge um, and we download the Advanced HMI project and currently right now we're on version 3.99x so you download this link it will download the file for you and once you have the file downloaded right here it comes in the zip file so you right click on it and hit extract all it will actually extract it into a folder that you'll see right here that I click into and then once I do that all I have to do is then um, double click on it and it calls up our Visual Studio for us. So that's our Visual Studio. So let's just go back to the um, uh, program right now and on our do more. And one thing to note is during the uh, protocol Modbus uh, TCP, I, or TCP, what you want to do is develop where the addresses are of your program. And in order, to, in order to do so, you look at the address map. And up here I have the address map. So everything on the Modbus TCP protocol um, through the Ethernet is going to go through what they call um, uh, Modbus registers. So we have Modbus coils. 1 to 1023, so the discrete output coils. We have discrete input coils at MI1 to MI1023. We have the analog input registers, MIR1 to MIR2047. And then we have an A, um, Modbus, Modbus holding register 1 to Modbus holding register 2047. Now within them, uh, do more and the bricks. Uh, software we can change that and make those areas larger or smaller as we wish and the corresponding address that we have is right here according to um, what we want to actually uh, program or set so if I look at this and then look back at my um, ladder logic you'll see that I have a simple start stop here and what I'm using is the MC1 and MC2 as my start stop and my indication is MI1. Right? Notice that everything starts at the 1 and the 0 is not represented in our addressing at all. So MHR0, uh, there is such a, a register but the actual Modbus itself is MHR1. And then what we'll do is in our program you'll see that we actually increment uh, MHR1 if we have our value set here and that increments this this value and then when that value is equal to or greater than 1001 we move zero back into it so it just resets itself so that's the entire program that we're going to do and we're going to create a start stop button here we're going to create an indication button here on our advanced HMI we're also going to uh, look at a BART or our um, digital panel meter as well as a gauge and view this information and you'll see how easy that can be. So going back to our uh, 
advanced HMI project, you'll notice here that I really don't have anything at all. Um, if I look at my main screen here, I call it up and it actually tells me that the first thing I need to do is build my project. So in order to build my project, I can, I can hit Control Shift B or I just hit Build, Build Solution. What this will do is actually load all my toolbars for me and have all the information compacted for me. So I have some indication that we've built it correctly. So now if I look at my toolbar, you'll see that now I have a lot of my different drivers and components. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to add a, a communication driver. And the communication driver that we're going to add is the Modbus TCP COM port. So we'll just drag that onto the screen. You'll see it comes back on the bottom here. If I click that, you'll see up here under my properties, I actually have um, my address here. And now it's not 0000. We have to actually look at our uh, software. We look at here. We look at our configuration. And our configuration, our IP address is actually 192.168.111. So let's hit OK for that or cancel. We'll go back to our software and that's what we'll actually put in. So this sets up our communication to our PLC. Now this is our pull rate. This is the rate at which we are going to communicate to our PLC. And currently right now it's set for 500 milliseconds and that is pretty good. That's two times a second. We'll, we'll actually uh, speed that up and we'll put at, at 100 milliseconds. So 10 times a second is going to communicate to that to our bricks. And you can play around with that to get the um, amount of, of uh, response that you'd like. So basically that's all it is to set up the, the communication. Now what we do is we'll go back to the um, toolbox and we will actually select a, a digital panel meter. Now, advanced controls, and we'll go down here, and you'll see the digital panel meter. So we'll just drag that over, and we'll actually increase that a little bit here. You can move it around. And what we'll do is look at the properties of that digital panel meter. And you'll see the background color is transparent. Now you'll see the little white here, so we're just going to change that. We'll put that as black. Then we'll go down some more and we'll go down to the address. Right. Um, and there we go. So the address value here and we're going to write in the address of our MHR1 which is their value that we are incrementing all the time. Now if you don't remember um, where that address is, we'll just call this up again and you can see here our address is actually uh, 40001, all right, which is MHR1. So that's what we'll write down in here, 40001. So that becomes our address that will take the information and display it on our digital panel meter. And the last thing we'll do with this digital panel meter here is we will actually uh, take the text and we can actually just eliminate that text or write something that would uh, be indica or indication for us. So MHR1. We'll leave it at that. And what will happen is you'll see that now indicated up on our screen. So that is our digital panel meter. And then we'll have, we'll also put a gauge. So we'll go back to the toolbox. We'll go down to gauge. And again, we'll drag that up on the screen. We can now resize that gauge. There we go. And again, what you'll see is that we have our accessor or our properties for our gauge up on our screen. We'll scroll through them here. Our text is actually gauge one, which you see there. Again, we'll just call this MHR one. And we will see that as appear right in our gauge. Now we'll scroll down a little bit more. And our highlighted color. Right? You'll see that automatically our COM communication port is Modbus TCP, which is located right down here, which is correct. Our maximum 
for this gauge currently is 100, which we can see. We want that to be 1,000, so we'll just change that to 1,000. Now you'll see our scaling vectors all change. And the last time, we, and the last thing we do is we set our uh, PLC address value, and the PLC address value again is going to be the same um, as we had before, which is 40001, and that Im indicates our our MH MHR1 uh, value that we have in there. And right now, what we can do is we can actually quickly um, we can save this project, and then we can start it. And when we start it, it actually compiles it and then starts running it. And what you'll see is our gauge automatically then populates with the value of MHR1. If we go back to our program, you'll see that that value currently in um, MHR1 is 276, which actually corresponds exactly to what our values are reading here, 276. And on our gauge itself, we have the same value. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to stop that. And what we'll do is we'll add some controls so that we can actually see what's going on in our controller. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a momentary push button. So we'll go to a box. We'll look down now for our momentary push button. There we go. And again, we'll drag that onto the screen. And this momentary push button, what we'll do is we will look at it background color the text we're gonna call this start and then we'll go down further you'll see the cup basic color is green and we'll, we'll look at the value when we click it and that value when we click it is going to actually be Zero, 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 00001 which is our first coil that we call up and if we look back at our registers here our first coil is MC1 which corresponds to our start indication so that's the one we actually are going to uh, utilize so that looks good now what we'll do is add another um, momentary button for our stop place it on the screen, put it beside the other one, and now we are we're programming momentary button number two. Again, go back to the start, we need to go down, and we'll call this stop, and then we'll go further down. You'll see right now our basic color button is green. We'll change that now to red. So it looks a little nicer for our stop condition. We will then uh, go further down and set our address. So when we click it, our stop button will actually be our, our uh, next uh, sequence in line, which is 0, 0, 0. Uh, zero two, and that will be our next coil, which is MC two. So the next thing we'll do is actually add a basic indicator, and the basic indicator will just show us whether the unit is stopped or started. So let's go down here to our basic indicator, and we'll drag it on the screen, and it's basically going to look like a, a round uh, circle that will light up and we'll make that light up red or green depending if it's stopped or started. So the basic indicator again we go back up through and we go down through the images our color one uh, we'll call this red again. So it indicates red. Our text value will actually have no text so we'll just make it a, a round button and that's it. Then what we can do is we can then add a color and what's going to happen and the color will go to green and that's color address number two and the value there is going to be one zero 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 one and that value 
if we go back to our address mapping, is going to be MI1, which is the output that we have for our contact. So everything's running, that'll be output, so that should then turn green. So now here's our program. We'll start that. And sure enough, there's our indications right now. And if I call up the, uh, right now, I hit start or stop, it's not, nothing's going to work because we haven't really uh, looked at the program per se and turned on certain values. So let's look at the program here. So here we have X1. I'm going to manually force that uh, bit. And we'll force that bit on. There we go. So now everything is set to go. I can then control it by MC1 and MC2, start, stop. I can then, uh, then MI1 will turn on, which will turn on our indication light. Our indication light and Y0 will be on our PLC. It will actually start incrementing MHR1, which we will see on our digital uh, panel meter as well as our gauge. So let's now go back and look at our program here and we'll hit start and sure enough that's exactly what happens you can see my indication lights green my panel meter is now counting up my gauge is now counting up with my pointer i can then stop it and my indication turns red and my panel meter freezes at the values that it had before so exactly as we expected um, this is ex exactly how we will uh, program. So you see that advanced HMI is a very easy and simple way of getting information in and out of the PLC quickly. So we'll let that run for a bit. Now, all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. Now, if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague about the site. Now that's it for now. Thanks for watching.